Today we are breaking muff. Quite ruthlessly. Okay guys, so today we are breaking math. We are supposed to <laughs> find the antiderivative of x to the power of dx, minus one. So, well, does this stuff even make, even make sense? Well, it doesn't, <laughs> it absolutely doesn't. Because, well, you see, opposed to the belief that is common for, among calculus students, the dx at the end of the integral is not just a part of notation. You see, whenever we're taking an integral, when we're trying to integrate some of the function, um, we're actually trying to get the area under its curve. So let me just draw some kind of function that is, let's say, curvy and decoding symbol real quick. And so what we do is we want to estimate the area that is between this curve of this function and between the x-axis. And so what we have to do is divide this area into some rectangles, some rectangles that those rectangles is with is going to be the dx, the change in x along the x-axis, and whose height is going to be the function's value, the value of the function evaluated at one of those endpoints of those intervals, the x's. And what we do then is we make the dx approach zero, so we get smaller and smaller, I mean, thinner and thinner and thinner rectangles, getting better and better and better approximation until we get a perfect uh, and ideal approximation of the exact area under the curve of the function. And so what we do is we, I mean, what we do by putting this dx right over here is we just calculate continuously, we just add continuously a bunch of rectangle areas where the height of the rectangle is the value of the function and the x is its width. And well, it makes some sense. I mean, area is gonna be always equal to, I mean, area of the rectangle is gonna be always equal to the height multiplied by the width. But what the hell is the height to the power of width? Nobody knows, <laughs> but well, that's probably because they, that's probably why this integral right here does not make any sense at all. But we will try and calculate it anyway. So, well, what's the trick to evaluating this kind of an integral, even though it does not make any sense mathematically? Well, what we would like to do here is, well, first of all, get this to a form where we have this dx and the variance so we can even go and proceed further. Yeah, so what I would like to do is divide and then multiply this entire thing by a dx. So what I would like to do is get the integral of x to the power of dx all over, uh, sorry, minus one all over dx and then everything multiplied by that dx. So that's the integral I would like to evaluate. I mean, can I do, can, can I do that? I mean, dx's are, approaching zero, they are infinitely small, so can I just go on and divide and multiply everything by a zero? Not quite, but shh, whatever. <laughs> and now, well, what is this stuff here inside of this integral? Well, this stuff is just x raised to the power of something that is infinitely small, minus one, all over something that is infinitely small. So you can just kind of go on and calculate what it is using a limit. So this is gonna be a limit as, let's say some kind of an h approaches a zero of x to the power of h minus one all over h, where h is gonna, be, is gonna, is gonna represent this dx right? I, I had right over here, yeah? And so, well, what is this limit equal to? I mean, as x approaches zero, this x to the power of h is gonna, uh, as h approaches, approaches zero, the x to the power of h is gonna be a one, so this one minus one is gonna be a zero. However, well, the denominator is also gonna be approaching zero, and so we're gonna have the situation where we have zero over zero. And that's an awesome <laughs> moment to use the L'Hopital's rule to, that the derivative of a quotient of two functions is just gonna be, uh, sorry, that the limit of um, quotient of two functions is gonna be 
uh, equal to the limit of the quotient of the derivatives and so we can just say that's going to be equal to the limit as h approaches zero of the derivative of x to the power of h minus one with respect to h which is equal to x to the h multiplied by natural log of x because that's going to be the derivative of x to the power of h and the derivative of negative one is going to be just a zero and the derivative of x here on the bottom side of the equation is going to be just a one and so as h approaches zero x to the power of h is going to approach a one and so this entire limit is going to be just equal to the natural log of x so well what the hell so this thing right over here is going to be equal to the natural log of x well yeah and so you can just go on and rewrite this entire integral as the natural as the integral of the natural log of x dx and well now Using the integration by parts method, we can just say that's going to be equal to x multiplied by the natural log of x minus the integral of x over of x multiplied by the derivative of natural log of x, which is x over x dx. So it's going to be equal to natural log of x multiplied by x and minus an x and plus a constant. Never forget the plus c. And so this is exactly what the integral of x to the power of dx minus 1 is equal to. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed breaking math with me. If you did, like and subscribe, and see you the next one. Bye.